Believe me, this is as good as it gets. I don't fear Phil Taylor. I think players fear me. He's looking like an absolute machine, and the other players know it. Oh, my goodness! That is what he can do! I will win. I just want to win everything. Some players are all obvious, but I'm not one of them. I'm going to be ready for Michael next week. What an amazing finish to an amazing game! He's the greatest in the sport I ever lived, but I'm challenging him at the moment. Michael's becoming better than anyone's ever been. We now have someone that doesn't care about Phil Taylor. He's hitting the treble twenties for fun! Look at him go! At this moment, I'm the best player in the world.
the top two in the league table collide in the final. Best of 21 legs. Taylor, Wayne Marlon's got to stick with him early. Yeah, I, I think so. We know what Michael's like. He, he, he dominated the early part of the, uh, the match against Adrian Lewis in the semi-final. It was just too much for Adrian to get back. Phil really has just got to stick in there and punish every mistake that, that Michael makes. His tournament average uh, checkout success is uh, 46% Phil Taylor's is. Michael's 48. If he can stick to a 46% and score decent enough to just shake Michael to his core, he has every chance. But that, that nervous comment he, he, he said in the semi-finals, it, He's got to get over those nerves, otherwise he will not beat Michael Van Gerwen. Babe Ruth once said, a man who never gives up is hard to beat. Taylor never, ever gives up. He's a winner. He loves winning. He absolutely detests losing. And look, this is why he's a six-time Premier League champ and 16-time world champ. This is going to be a cracker. Your commentators, John Parr and Rod Studd. Thank you, Dave. The top two in the Premier League doing battle on the big stage in the big final the prize two hundred thousand pounds and the right to call yourself premier league champion phil taylor six times the creme de la prem last the in 2012 van gerwin won it the following year beating taylor in the final and gerwin the favorite to some tune do you agree with that john oh yes he's just so confident getting the job done when he needs to is exemplified so well in the, the semi-final match with Adrian Lewis well, both men relatively easy wins in the semi-final Van Gerwen threatened mid-match by Lewis pulled away Phil Taylor surviving a late rally by Gary Anderson but was never behind to the world champion for prevailing 10-7 10-4 the score for Van Gerwen Still, the mood all night has been a bit tense, a bit nervy. Nobody has been near their perfect game. And it looks like that mood still prevails. And Phil Taylor with a possible 13 dart leg eyeing up double 12 to lead the Premier League final. Emphatic, and Phil Taylor mentioned before that he was a little bit edgy, a little bit nervous. That will calm him, John. That will help. Well, sometimes you need to be a little edgy and a little nervous. It's just not too nervous. It, it helps the adrenaline flow. It's a bit of a tightrope walk, but it can be good. Well, a victory over Michael Van Gerwen has become a personal holy grail for the power in recent months remember the grand slam final when he led early on in the piece 100. couldn't convert in the masters semi-final he missed a raft of match doubles and was punished by van gerwin the premier league a six all draw taylor did well to earn a point had to come from five one adrift and then in rotterdam a week ago van gerwin won to secure top spot do you think it's preying on his mind the fact that he's still looking or has been looking for some time for a big win over the world number one john yeah it's his big thing now he never had this opportunity his whole career because he was that number one so this is uh, something a little more new and fresh I, maybe Six way three. back when he one first started yeah there was a few targets he had but not like this He's enjoying the challenge, I'm sure. You know, he's not enjoying the results. He isn't enjoying that one, two, one out. Well the into the 200s. So we're at one each. Good hold to throw straight back from Van Gerwen. Gerwen's highest finish of the evening. Has had a 170 out shot in the tournament. And regardless of the outcome of this match, it will be a Premier League that will be remembered for that world record average also 123.4 staggering average and, and everyone always adds to that and the average it could have been it could have been 136 hit a double and then we see 111 110 
win 11. We were talking about that before the night began, as all these players are capable of it. Wouldn't it be great if a few do? And maybe Phil can bring his average up from that 102.86. I think he will if Michael keeps that standard up, because Phil will have to. First to 11, 70 in this final. And that is the first maximum of this final. He had six in the semi, Michael Van Gerwen. And now, at the second time of asking only, Phil Taylor's throw is under scrutiny. What a response. An easy two dark finish, but this is an easy three dark finish for world number one. 93. An odd choice, right? But he couldn't see the treble 20 clearly from where he was standing. But it, it, did, it did make life awkward, didn't it? Well, you can move your feet. <laughs> Phil says maybe he should have. Good finish under pressure by Phil Taylor. Well, the outcome 100. always justifies the decision, or not, or not in this case. Going 54 for double 19. Had he hit it, you'd have all been saying, marvellous adjustment, what a, what a wise shot. 60. He didn't hit it, and so we wonder. It's amazing how you can average 114 and a half without really looking like you're coming out of third gear. Well, and you're second on the scores that count. 2-1 down. Okay, it's on throw, I realize that, but still with that sort of average, normally you break a guy out of two tries. 130. Well, in the semi-final against Gary Anderson, it was very much tit for tat, tit for tat from Taylor and Anderson as they repeatedly held until 5-4 to Taylor when he broke Anderson to go 6-4. Well, Phil really has mounted no challenge against Van Gerwen's throw in the two attempts. His tops. To level it. In a full flag. Head center. No worries at all. And Michael will be very pleased if uh, Phil doesn't attack his throw ever. Well, theoretically, I stress theoretically, Phil Taylor does not need to break throw. 140. If all 21 legs went with throw, he would win, but the likelihood of that, I would say, would be pretty slim. Well, yeah. Especially Van Gerwen, the second 180 there. He's looking to get better and better as the match goes on. 41. One thing Michael will be very happy with so far, he's two of three on the doubles. Okay, that doesn't sound crazy, but if he had been missing, that could be two of seven maybe. 93. Well, only 10 of 27 in the semi-final when he really did and he mess about on yeah, double and he missed them early so what i'm he saying did. is there haven't been those early missed darts at double which is would have been his main concern at the break 83. well now he's got his chance because he's nine ahead plus these on the taylor throw 150. <laughs> Just as an odd thought here, Rod, it, Michael looks almost determined to break his own record on the scoring here. in the final of the Premier League. Wouldn't that be something? Longer format, but he's, he's 99. Well, it's getting bigger as he goes. He's at the 116 and a half now. No finish from Van Gerwen. So to hang on, and it would potentially be a big blow this, because Van Gerwen from midway through this leg would have been banking on breaking. Will he stay for double nine? No, went treble 18 for double 12. 98. Michael, you require 60. Oh well, yeah, he was. 
banking on breaking and can break the bank. And you saw it in the fifth leg, Michael Van Gogh. It's the break he wanted, Sifflet it comes Michael in the fifth leg. Throw first. Game on. So the world number one, the man who started odds on favourite to win when we arrived at the 0-2. And we rocked up here. He's now in a very strong position. He did say it was very unlikely Phil didn't get broken. Sure enough. 61. A little subdued there. 61. That's a chance for Phil to regroup a bit. Put a big score in. Often the best time to break back is straight away. 140. Well, this is the 18th match of a grueling Premier League campaign for both players. Travelling the length and breadth, not just of the UK, not just Great Britain and Ireland, but now continental Europe as well. And after you've grafted away for the thick end of four months, you don't want to lose at the last. 100. Well, not only all those matches and all those weeks but all the regular tour events that they attend quite a many of not all of them perhaps but they keep busy and it is grueling and tiring 133 a break back chance coming for phil taylor unless van gerwin nails the 107. double 16. why is it 75. Uh, good effort but 32. just a tad unlucky Phil, double 16. That's a nice marker. Phil Rue missing the chance. 16. Well, he fashioned the opportunity for himself Michael like a golfer. 32. Putting the ball to three feet and missing. Will he get another chance? You can't see much of that, John, can he? Well, yeah, that second one kicked out. Yeah. Goodness me. Good grief. Half the bed to a map, perhaps. Yeah, Phil Taylor cannot believe it. Well, Michael's showing so much emotion there because he's happy he punished Phil for missing. He didn't want to let him off. It's so vital in the psychology of a match to make sure you punish your opponent's errors. 86. Well, Phil Taylor will be disgusted with himself because he'd fashioned the opportunity superbly John having a dozen darts to leave double 16 three in hand now he has got to hold here two breaks down and it starts to really get well like pushing custard uphill with a fork 137 137 44. Got to hold here, really, you feel. And Van Gerwen only 70 behind and in the mood to reduce that to nothing and beyond and beyond. Yeah, and he was well aware that a 180 would put him to a pretty nice outshot opportunity. Just needs the one treble and a bull, maybe. Maybe two trebles and a regular double. And Phil. He's on the outside looking 100. in. 100. Michael Lupin, 124. Bullseye. 99. Well, in that final of 2013, we mentioned this, didn't we? In the uh, game against Lewis. He turned down a bull shot against Phil Taylor, who went out with 160. Almost cost Van Gogh in the title. Never up, never in, Phil. 57. Michael Lucroix, 25. So nine for double eight. That's to be in or outside. That's a good marker. Yeah, right alongside it. Flag. I noticed Michael earlier Michael. in the semi, you get a little more trouble if you miss inside on that double eight. Then you're going to hey, go all the way Michael to the other side of the board. So that was the ideal Game first dart for him.
119. Well, Van Gerwen is never a man short on confidence, but you feel the confidence tank has been topped up to overflowing. 100. Particularly by the leg where Phil Taylor missed those three darts at double 16. That was the sixth leg. Could have been three all. It wasn't. It was 4 2. Now 5 2. Difficult to stop a runaway truck, John. Yeah, and he's had a couple of finishes where it's the third dart that's hit the double, and it is just such a boost psychologically. 100. I feel like you've got away with something almost. One hundred and forty. Ninety-seven. So, one hundred and two. Half a dozen darts here if he needs them all to go six-two. Over halfway to the finishing post. Sixty-two. Now it's time for Phil to do something dramatic. Like a one eighty to leave double. Even if he doesn't get a shot, at least he sends a message of intent. 140. Top of the shot. 40. For 6 2, MVG. 80. And it is 6 2 to the world number one. Over the years, Phil Taylor's game was really built on a relentless dominance dismantling a boa constrictor of a player that just choked the life out of you here john he's gonna have to produce something more of a flashy performance some 11s and 12s and 13s and 12s off the reel which yeah one wonders if he can do he needs a burst like that and well you feel he could do it but are these circumstances just all too much at the moment 100 a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, he was number one in the, in the league table and thought he had a chance and, uh, of winning 100. that extra bit of prize money. But, you know, since then, he's been on the defensive, and he's been on the defensive for weeks now, and it, it's worn him down. That was a, a loss to Peter Wright in Birmingham that took control of top spot out of his hands. To a certain degree, anyway. Yeah, and arguably Peter Wright's uh, best moment, his best week for sure. He got a point off of Gary Anderson that night as well, and it was a night to remember for Peter Wright. But for Phil Taylor, he probably remembers it in nightmare fashion. One hundred. So it was the beginning of his undoing, really. Not writing him out of this match. We could be talking about how he looked right out of it in five legs, but. Certainly doesn't look too good now. Well, this must be removed. Two darts at double ten. Yeah, well done. Really well done from Phil Taylor. He's been on the wrong end of an absolute shellacking for four consecutive legs. He gets back to 6-3. He needs the break. It's rather like that Lewis semi-final against Van Gerwen, John, isn't it? 6-2 became 6-4 at the break. Phil Taylor trying to do what Adrian Lewis did. Yeah, and needing it. Just as much as Adrian needed it. Great start to the leg. 140. Punishing the 49 of Van Gerwen. 96. What happened after the break, after Lewis had got back to 6-4, Van Gerwen went berserk. Reeled off four legs before you could even blink in the merry-go-round. Turf Lewis off, and it was 10 4. Yeah, he started off that procession with an 11 dart leg. Hold his throw. Just an excellent performance, as we expect. 123. he would give to stick two on top of that one he's, that. So he's got the first part of that equation right now he needs van gerwen to be trebleless really yeah I, van gerwen's thinking okay six starts for two three three i can do it sleeping got one three three off to leave a ton he's thinking two darts not three that's what he's thinking now 
Phil Taylor is thinking turn 40 to leave tops. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So now, what a brilliant passage of play here from both players. Right in the meat of this match. Two darts at double top consecutively. One, two! The old one-two from Michael Van Gerwen with Phil Taylor waiting on tops to close the gap to 6-4. He slams the door in the power's face. It's 7-3 to Van Gerwen. Four more legs will give him the title of Premier League champ. You can see this, there's not too much between them. The Dublin stats are, are superb, but it's that 100 finish that changed everything. You think that Phil Taylor would have got tops to make it 6-4, which is more than doable. But 7-3, four legs behind MVG is going to have it all to do, Phil Taylor. What's good to see, though, from my perspective is that he looks like Phil Taylor, he looks like he believes he can do a job here. Yes, it's become much, much harder because of that 100 finish, but he's throwing well, and he looks like, to me, he's a man that believes. 140. You can always point to many, many turning points in a darts match, but two stand out, leg six and leg ten, both legs in which Michael Van Gerwen had first use of the hockey. In the sixth leg, Taylor missed three darts at double 16. Van Gerwen held throw. It could have been three all, it was 4-2. And there, the tenth, with Taylor left on double top. Van Gerwen went out with that audacious double top, double top. Could have been 6-4, it wasn't, it was 7-3. Heck of a difference. Indeed. 140. Started off after the break. With 140s, 9 and 10. Van Gerwen a win machine since 2012. Last year, he won more or less everything apart from the World Championships and this. The two biggies that eluded him. Travel 17, a requisite. The ball! 96. Well, it could not have been closer without actually 76. entering its target. And is this going to be another big moment? With two at double eight. The switch. The finish. The lead grows to eight three. Time and time and time again. If you miss, I hit darts. He's out tailoring Taylor. This is what Phil Taylor has done to his opponents for the last two and a bit decades. You miss a dart of bullseye. And you pay the ultimate price and then not only does Michael take it out he then starts off 180 averaging 108.87 Michael Van Gerwen incredible yes oh now then he has missed a dart at double 12 for a nine dart leg in this Premier League program to do it on finals night. 60, Mark Liverpool, 141. Wow. Not far away, but far enough away. Michael just having a little smile there to the referee, George Noble. The most pleasing thing for Michael is that... 99. Michael really is in control of the leg as well. 60. Triple 16, now for double eight. 68. It's all so routine for Michael, it just even looks it. Looks so simple. Seventy four. Well, been watching Phil Taylor 16. play for the last 30 years. I can he's count on one hand 12, the number of times he's just go. thrown the darts away. Leg, Phil, Absolutely Rogers. dismayed at himself, and there's the face. That is the face, in my opinion, of a beaten man. Well, Raymond Van Barneveld, after the 
World Championship final at Alexandra Palace when Taylor beat him 7-1. 60. Said, I practice 10 hours a day. I can't beat him. What do I have to do to beat this man? Well, that, I think, is what's running through Phil Taylor's head Ooh. now about Michael Van Gerwen. Just seems an unstoppable force. But shortly after the break, Phil was was on it. He looked OK, Goofy. he looked ready for the battle. But Michael seems to have broken him. He's averaging 108 here, Michael Van Gerwen. His 18th match in the Premier League this year, regular season and playoffs it will be 15 out of 18 averages of 100 plus that used to be the barometer figure no longer now it's routine 16. as you've just said Wayne quite incredible it just looks so simple 140 well if you want to be ultra critical, you could say that he shouldn't have gone for the 180 anyway. 100. Phil Taylor is going through the motions. Michael Van Gerwen has absolutely battered him. And yes, 64. there was a turning point before leg 10, but that 100 finish, 20 tops tops, has changed this match. It's changed Phil Taylor. 139. Mark Lewis won 98. Well, he's got a choice here. Treble 20 or treble 18. Well, he chose the latter. 58. Phil Taylor 84. Well, this Phil Taylor. Got the mindset to take this out. Double 11 it is. 73, Mark Leopold, 40. For his 10th leg. Getting closer. 20. A reprieve. Phil Leopold, 11. Is this just prolonging the agony? Or is this the start of a bona fide comeback? Double two. Nine. Michael, you require 20. Well, what happened in the previous half a dozen legs has had a consequence at the end of this one. Double ten. And takes him to ten. Michael ten three to Michael Van Gerwen. 14 flag, Michael to three. Phil Taylor first. Game on. led this darts match 2 1. Led this darts match 2 1. He's won one leg since then, and Van Gerwen's won nine. Sorry, eight. Eight. Getting ahead of myself. Oh, no, he's nine, yeah. Nine, one, nine out of ten. And that really is a remarkable run against any player, but when you put that run against the greatest player that's ever picked up a dart, it's quite staggering. Michael Van Gerwen has previous annihilations of Phil Taylor. He's the only man ever in Premier League history to defeat the power 7-0. 96. Michael Van Gerwen knows that he can beat Phil Taylor by a rugby score, but also Phil Taylor knows it. 100. That, I hark back to that 100 finish. It's changed this man. 100, Michael Lewis, 121. Number seven is looking unlikely for Phil Taylor. Number two for Michael Van Gerwen is an odds-on certainty 53. right now. Phil Taylor won the very first Premier League. 16 legs to four against Colin Lloyd. This 134, Michael Lewis, 68. Every bit as comprehensive. Double four, and hey, the world so number one Matt, proves without any shadow of a doubt that champion. he is the number one. He's the premier player in world darts. He has underlined it 
over 16 weeks of competition and finished off with the most brutal dismantling of the 16 times world champion. Michael Van Gerwen has beaten Phil Taylor by 11 legs to three. That is Michael Van Gerwen, that is Daphne, his wife. But a word for Phil Taylor. People have said time and time again that he, he's finished, he can't cope with Van Gerwen. Well, tonight he found it tough. But over the duration of this Premier League, Phil Taylor has put up one hell of a fight. He was within two legs of topping the table. The six-time Premier League champion, Phil Taylor, has to take defeat on the chin tonight because it belongs to Michael Van Gerwen. Let's hand over to our presentation party and John McDonald. Well, ladies and gentlemen, an amazing final one more time. And now, our presentation party, please welcome the chairman of the Professional Dance Corporation, Mr. Barry Hearn, and the marketing and operation director of Betway, our title sponsors, Mr. Anthony Workman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the runner-up receiving £100,000 and the trophy. And that goes to the legend that is Phil the Power Taylor! And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for as we present the winner. With £200,000, the magnificent trophy, and for the second time he's crowned the Betway Premier League Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Mighty Michael! Michael, Michael, well done. Congratulations, well done, well played, really well played. Can we trouble you for a couple of words? Just, just some. I mean, just some of your feeling because it's not every day of the week that you can play so well and beat two great players so comprehensively in one night. No, there was. Uh, I, I didn't expect it. Well, Scoring-wise, it was. It was not too close to be fair. But I really glad I did the right thing at the right moment today and. Uh, we all went on the bench. You could see this end of the Premier League. It's getting tired. Everyone's is worn out a little bit. But I'm really glad I was the best tonight, and uh, I, I, I want to win this trophy back very hard. And I'm really glad I took it back. To be fair, you've been the best for 16 weeks. It's a very, very long season, the Premier League, isn't it? You have to play well for a very long time. And that must make you very proud that you've done that. Of course, very proud. I only lost one game in this Premier League, and then, yeah, against James Ray, the first night of, of, of the Premier League. And uh, what can I say? This feels fantastic for me. I'm, I'm over the moon to win this title. Uh, the PDC, all the sponsors, the team, and the crowd will make this happen. It's uh, unbelievable. It was one of the big titles that you're missing, isn't it? You really wanted the Premier League. I know that. Yeah, I, I, not missing but it was a bit a while ago when i won it for the last time and uh, i want to have it back and i'm playing strong in this tournament every year i've been top of the table four years in a row i'm really glad i can hold this trophy now for the second time it's also a tournament where you've broken the world record average so this 2016 premier league will be remembered for that too michael i'm, I'm not doing too bad uh, <laughs> it's it's been really hard even phil taylor uh, everyone everyone always writes him off but no one is allowed to write him up because he's a legend, he played really well. He, I did some really dirty finishing against him in the final and I'm really, I'm really glad I won this trophy and really nice to play Phil Taylor in the final. There's a couple of uh, big tournaments coming up, first the World Cup and then the match play as well. And, Dubai, yeah, yeah and, and Dubai as well. And You feel that the four guys we've seen tonight are going to be battling away every week now. It's the number one tournament four in the world ranking. What can we, this quote, what can they wish more on, on a telly or whatever? It's the number one, two, three, and four in the world, and 
that they get in the Premier League, it's fantastic. And uh, I also want to say to all the other players who competed in, we, we all together make a tournament like this happen, and it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm, I'm really enjoyed it, but it's also has to done because I won the tournament now, and a lot of pressure on my shoulders now because it was a little while ago. Yeah, well done. Well, thanks for joining us, Michael. It's been a special tournament. Thanks very much indeed. Let's uh, just have a quick word with Phil Taylor, who's uh, just behind us here. Phil, if you want to just come over here, come across, please. Just step out the front there. That bit. Sorry, Phil. I'm sorry. If you just mind to just go around there, that'd be really helpful. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Sorry. No, that's great there. Phil, thanks for coming out to talk to us. That's very much appreciated. Just give us your reaction to the night, if you could. Reaction to the night? Uh, very proud to get through to the final. I must be honest with you. A very lucky boy to get through to the final. He, he beat me up. He did. I, you know, he put me under pressure. He made me miss doubles. And he, he just did what he did. I mean, he, he's doing phenomenal things. I, don't, I honestly don't know how he does it. He just does it at the right time. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say, really. I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon to be in the final. I mean, Betway's, you know, we sponsored you know, sponsor the tournament. And, and I really tried to, to give me best. And I thought, relax, try and just throw quicker and try and throw slower. But I just couldn't react against him. He was just, he, he's doubles. It's his finishing. His scoring is good. His he's finishing is, is phenomenal. It really is. And that's where he hurts you. It's like doing a combination, you know. It's not one shot, it's a dink dink. He, he's, he's an Anthony Joshua. That's what he is at the minute. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to reflect when you've just been in the heat of a battle. But over this season, I think when you look back on the 2016 Premier League, you can reflect with some pride on what you performed, bearing in mind what happened last year and how disappointed you were. I mean, you, you've, you've taken a big step forward. <laughs> Last year, last year's last year. I mean, I know, I don't know why you mentioned last year, but the, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon about being here. Of course I am. You know what I mean? I was gutted about last year, and, and, I, and I well documented it. But you know, to get through to the semi-final in this in this yeah. league you're in now is is magnificent. Trust me. You know, you've got the best players. You have got the best players I have ever I've ever been with, and I've been with them all. Whether it, whether it's you know, you go back from Jockey Wilson to, to, to John Lowe's. I mean, John Lowe was fantastic, big cliff. You know, Keith Dallin in his day. But th these lads are different class, you know. They are, they are, they're different class. Well, you're still punching with them. We look forward to seeing you. I wish I, I've seen how they do it. I don't, I don't know how he does it. He just does it. He doesn't seem to practice. Well, he does practice. But I don't know what he does to make him that good. But they, 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 some, there's some secret he's doing, but I don't know what it is yet. I'll find out. Yeah, well, you're still pretty useful yourself, don't worry about that. We look forward to seeing you at the World Cup and also at the match play. So thanks for talking to us and congratulations on a good season. Well, they'll play the Lewis is practising because they got him. Michael, Michael, final word. Uh, just sum up how you're feeling going into the rest of the season now with the World Cup coming up and the match play. We know you, Gary, Phil and Adrian are going to be battling away for these big titles, which we're all looking forward to watching you. Yeah, one thing, he's always playing well in the match play, but there's a bit too far ahead. First, we're going off to Dubai. I'm already flying over Saturday to, to take my rest and make sure I'm prepared for that tournament. Because there's only big tournaments on the road now and we can't afford any mistakes. What, what we both know of each other and all the other players as well. Darts is getting bigger and bigger and uh, they are part of it and the Phil Taylor is part of it. That's uh, his fault. Yes, yeah, his fault. But it, I'm, I'm really. That's Barry Hurt. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased to be part of it. Thank you. Well, thanks for talking to us, Phil. Well played. Michael, congratulations. Another great Premier League season. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. Gwen Mardles here, Michael Van Gogh dismantled Taylor. Yeah, there, there was just uh, two moments for me. There was, there was one in the, in the sixth leg, but it, I said in commentary, it was that, that hundred finish in leg 10. Another big moment with two at double eight. The switch, the finish. The lead grows to eight three. Time and time and time so again. It's you miss, I hit Game darts. On. He's out tailoring Taylor. This is what Phil Taylor has done to his opponents for the last two and a bit decades. You miss a dart of bullseye. And you pay the ultimate price. And then not only does Michael take it out, he then starts off 180. 100. Averaging 108.87, Michael Van Gerwen. Incredible. Yes. Oh, now then. 
He has missed a dart at double 12 for a nine dart leg in this Premier League program. But to do it on finals night. 60, Mark Livermore, 141. Wow. Not far away, but far enough 57. away. Michael just having a little smile there to the referee, George Noble. The most pleasing thing for Michael is that 99. Michael really is in control 84. of the leg as well. 60. Triple 16. Now for double eight. 68. It's all so routine for Michael. It just even looks it. Looks so simple. Seventy-four. Well, been watching Phil Taylor play for the last thirty years. I can count on one hand the number of times he's just thrown the darts away. Absolutely dismayed at himself, and there's the face. That is the face, in my opinion, of a beaten man. Well, Raymond van Barneveld, after the World Championship final at Alexandra Palace. When Taylor beat him 7-1, he said, I practice 10 hours a day, I can't beat him. What do I have to do to beat this man? Well, that, I think, is what's running through Phil Taylor's head Whoa. now about Michael Van Gerwen. Just seems an unstoppable force. But shortly after the break, Phil was, was on it. He looked OK, he looked ready for the battle. But Michael seems to have broken him. Averaging 108 here, Michael Van Gerwen, his 18th match in the Premier League this year, regular season and playoffs. It will be 15 out of 18 averages of 100 plus. That used to be the barometer figure, no longer. Now it's routine, 16. as you've just said, Wayne. Quite incredible. It just looks so simple. 140. Well, if you want to be ultra critical, you could say that he shouldn't have gone for the 180 anyway. 100. Phil Taylor is going through the motions. Michael Van Gerwen has absolutely battered him. And yes, 64. there was a turning point before leg 10, but that 100 finish. 20 tops tops has changed this match. It's changed Phil Taylor. 139. Mark Lefouan, 98. Well, he's got a choice here. Treble 20 or treble 18. Well, he chose the latter. 58. Mark 84. Well, it's Phil Taylor. Got the mindset to take this out. Double 11 it is. 73, Mark Leopold, 40. For his 10th leg. Heading closer. 20. A reprieve. Phil Leopold, 11. Is this just prolonging the agony? Or is this the start of a bona fide comeback? Double two. Nine. Michael, you require 20. Well, what happened in the previous half a dozen legs has had a consequence at the end of this one. Double ten. And takes him to ten. Ten three to Michael Van Gerwen. 14 flag, Michael to three. Phil Taylor Game led this darts match 2 1 led this darts match 2-1 he's won one leg since then and Van Gerwen's won nine sorry eight eight getting ahead of myself oh no he's not yeah nine one nine out of ten and that really is a remarkable run against any player but when you put that run against the greatest player that's ever picked up a dart it's quite staggering Michael Van Gerwen has previous annihilations of Phil Taylor he is the only man ever in Premier League history 
to defeat the power 7-0. 96. Michael Van Gerwen knows that he can beat Phil Taylor by a rugby score, but also Phil Taylor knows it. 100. I hark back to that 100 finish. It's changed this man. 100. Michael Lucas, 100. Number seven. He's looking unlikely for Phil Taylor. Number two for Michael Van Gerwen is an odds on certainty 53. right now. Phil Taylor won the very first Premier League. 16 legs to four against Colin Lloyd. This 134. Michael Lucas, 68. Every bit as comprehensive. Double four, and the world number one proves without any shadow of a doubt that he is the number one. He's the premier player in world darts. He has underlined it over 16 weeks of competition and finished off with the most brutal dismantling of the 16 times world champion. Believe me, this it's as good as it gets. I don't fear Phil Taylor. I think players fear me. He's looking like an absolute machine, and the other players know it. Oh, Game my goodness! That is what he can do! I will win. I just want to win everything. Some players are in awe of him, but I'm not one of them. I'm going to be ready for Michael next week. What an amazing finish! Do an amazing game! He's the greatest in the sport that ever lived, but I'm challenging him at the moment. Michael's becoming better than anyone's ever been. We now have someone that doesn't care about Phil Taylor. He's hitting the treble 20s for fun! Look at him go! At this moment, I'm the best player in the world.
ladies and gentlemen from the Netherlands, trying to meet the world number one, the former Premier League champion and the former champion of the world, mighty Michael. Top two in the league table collide in the final. Best of 21 legs. Taylor, Wayne Marlon's got to stick with him early. Yeah, I, I think so. We know what Michael's like. He, he dominated the early part of the, uh, the match against Adrian Lewis in the semi-final. It was just too much for Adrian to get back. Phil really has just got to stick in there and punish every mistake that, that Michael makes. His tournament average uh, as checkout success is 46% uh, Phil Taylor's is, Michael's 48. If he can stick to a 46% and score decent enough to just shake Michael to his core, he has every chance. But that, that nervous comment he, he, he said in the semi-finals, it, he's got to get over those nerves, otherwise he will not beat Michael Van Gerwen. Babe Ruth once said, a man who never gives up is hard to beat. Taylor never, ever gives up. It, it, he's a winner. He loves winning, he absolutely detests losing. And look, this is why he's a six-time Premier League champ and 16-time world champ. This is going to be a cracker. Your commentators, John Parr and Rod Studd. Thank you, Dave. The top two in the Premier Ooh. League. Doing battle on the big stage in the big final. The prize, £200,000. One hundred and forty. Ninety-seven. So, one hundred and two. Half a dozen darts here if he needs them all to go six-two over halfway to the finishing post. Sixty-two. Well, it's time for Phil to do something dramatic, like a one-eighty to leave double. Even if he doesn't get a shot, at least he sends a message of intent. 140. Top of the shot. 40. For 6 2, MVG. 80. And it is 6 2 to the world Over number one. Phil to Over the years, Phil Taylor's game was really built on a relentless. Dominance, dismantling a boa constrictor of a player that just choked the life out of you here, John. He's going to have to produce something more of a flashy performance, some 11s and 12s and 13s and 12s off the reel, which yeah. one wonders if he can do. He needs a burst like that, and, well, you feel he could do it, but are these circumstances just all too much at the moment? 100. A couple of weeks ago, or maybe a month ago, he was number one in the, in the league table and thought he had a chance and, uh, of winning 100. that extra bit of prize money. But, you know, since then, he's been on the defensive, and he's been on the defensive for weeks now, and it, it's worn him down. That was a, a loss to Peter Wright in Birmingham. But 
took the control of top spot out of his hands to a certain degree anyway yeah and arguably peter wright's uh, best moment his best week for sure he got a point off of gary anderson that night as well and it was a night to remember for peter wright but for phil taylor he probably remembers it in nightmare fashion 100 so it was the beginning of his undoing really not writing him out of this match we could be talking about how he looked right out of it in five legs but certainly doesn't look too good now well, this must be removed two darts at double ten yeah well done really well done from phil taylor he's been on the wrong end of an absolute shellacking for four consecutive legs he gets back to six three he needs the break it's rather like that Lewis semi-final against Van Gerwen, John, isn't it? 6-2, became 6-4 at the break. Phil Taylor trying to do what Adrian Lewis did. Yeah, and needing it. Just as much as Adrian needed it. Great start to the leg. 140. Punishing the 49 of Van Gerwen. What happened after the break, after Lewis had got back to 6-4, Van Gerwen went berserk. Reeled off four legs before you could even blink, and the merry-go-round turfed Lewis off, and it was 10-4. Yeah, he started off that procession with 41. an 11 dart leg. Hold his throw. Just an excellent performance, as we expect. 123. he would give to stick two on top of that one he's done that. So he's got the first part of that equation right now he needs van gerwen to be trebleless really yeah I, van gerwen's thinking okay six starts with two three three i can do it sleeping he's got one three three off to leave a ton he's thinking two darts not three that's what he's thinking now and phil taylor is thinking ton 40 to leave tops and that's exactly what's going to happen so now, what a brilliant passage of play here from both players. Right in the meat of this match. Two darts at double top consecutively. One, two! The old one-two from Michael Van Gerwen with Phil Taylor waiting on tops to close the gap to 6-4. He slams the door in the power's face. It's 7-3 to Van Gerwen. Four more legs will give him the title of Premier League champ. You can see this there's not too much between them the Dublin stats are, are superb but it's that hundred finish that changed everything you think that Phil Taylor would have got tops to make it 6-4 which is more than doable but 7-3 four legs behind MVG is gonna have it all to do Phil Taylor what's good to see though from my perspective is that he looks like Phil Taylor, he looks like he believes he can do a job here. Yes, it's become much, much harder because of that 100 finish. But he's throwing well, and he looks like, to me, he's a man that believes. 140. You can always point to many, many turning points in a darts match, but two stand out. Leg six and leg ten, both legs in which Michael Van Gerwen had first use of the hockey in the sixth leg. Taylor missed three darts at double 16. Van Gerwen held throw. It could have been three all, it was 4 2. And there, the tenth, with Taylor left on 100. double top. Van Gerwen went out with that audacious double top, double top. Could have been 6 4, it wasn't. It was 7 3. Heck of a difference. Indeed. 140. Started off after the break with 140s, 9 and 10. Michael Van Gerwen really has a, a win machine since 2012. Last year, he won more or less everything apart from the World Championships and this. The two biggies that eluded him. Travel 17. 
a requisite. The ball. 96. Well, it could not have been closer Wazoo without Ashley 76. entering its target. And is this going to be... 41. One thing Michael will be very happy with so far, he's 2 of 3 on the doubles. Okay, that doesn't sound crazy, but if he had been missing, that could be 2 of 7 maybe. 93. Well, only 10 of 27 in the semi-final when he really did and he mess about on yeah, double. And he missed them early. So what I'm he saying did. is there haven't been those early missed darts at double. Which is, would have been his main concern at the break. 83. Well, now he's got his chance because he's nine ahead plus these on the Taylor throw. 115. Hey, just as an odd thought here, Rod, it, Michael looks almost determined to break his own record on the scoring in the final of the Premier League. Wouldn't that be something? Longer format. But he's, he's 99. Well, it's getting bigger as he goes. It's at the 116 and a half now. No finish from Van Gerwen. So to hang on, and it would potentially be a big blow this because Van Gerwen from midway through this leg would have been banking on breaking. Will he stay for double nine? No, went treble 18 for double 12. 98. Michael, you require 60. Well, yeah, he was banking on breaking and can break the bank. A shot in a fifth leg, Michael Van Gogh. It's the break he wanted, Sixth it comes Michael in the fifth leg. leg. Throw first. Game on. And so the world number one, the man who started odds on favourite to win when we arrived at the 0-2. And we rocked up here. He's now in a very strong position. He did say it was very unlikely Phil didn't get broken. Sure enough. 61. A little subdued there. 61. That's a chance for Phil to regroup a bit. Put a big score in. Often the best time to break back is straight away. 140. Well, this is the 18th match of a grueling Premier League campaign for both players. Travelling the length and breadth, not just of the UK, not just Great Britain and Ireland, but now continental Europe as well. And after you've grafted away for the thick end of four months, you don't want to lose at the last. 100. Well, not only all those matches and all those weeks but all the regular tour events that mm -hmm. they attend quite a many of not all of them perhaps but they keep busy and it is grueling and tiring 133 a break back chance coming for phil taylor unless van gerwin nails the 107. double 16. why is it 75. good <laughs> effort but just a tad, tad unlucky Phil, double 16. That's a nice marker. Will Rue missing the chance. 16. Well, he fashioned the opportunity Michael for himself Lee like a 32. golfer. Putting the ball to three feet and missing. Will he get another chance? You can't see much of that, John, can he? Well, yeah, that second one kicked out. Yeah. Oh, Goodness me. Good grief. Half the bed to aim at, perhaps. Yeah, Phil Taylor cannot believe it. Well, Michael's showing so much emotion there because he's happy he punished Phil for missing. He didn't want to let him off. It's so vital in the psychology of a match to make sure you punish your opponent's errors. 86. Well, Phil Taylor will be disgusted with himself because he'd fashioned the opportunity superbly John having a 16. dozen darts to leave double 16 three in hand now he has got to hold here two breaks down and it starts to really get well like pushing custard uphill with a fork 137 
137. Forty-four. Got to hold here, really, you feel. And Van Gerwen only 70 behind and in the mood to reduce that to nothing and beyond and beyond. Yeah, and he was well aware that a 180 would put him to a pretty nice outshot opportunity. Just needs the one treble and a bull, maybe. Maybe two trebles and a regular double. And Phil. He's on the outside looking 100. in. 100, Mark Lupo, 124. Bullseye. 99. Well, in that final of 2013, we mentioned this, didn't we? In the uh, game against Lewis, he turned down a bull shot against Phil Taylor, who went out with 160. Almost cost Van Gogh in the title. Never up, never in, Phil. 57. Mark Lepore, 25. So nine for double eight. That's to be in or outside. That's a good marker. Yeah, right alongside it. Flag. I noticed Ooh, earlier in the go. semi, you get a little more trouble if you miss inside on that double eight. Then you're going to go all the way to the other side of the board. So that was the ideal Came first on. dart for him. Well, Van Gerwen is never a man short on confidence, but you feel the confidence tank has been topped up to overflowing. 100. Particularly by the leg where Phil Taylor missed those three darts at double 16. That was the sixth leg. Could have been three all. It wasn't. It was 4 2. Now 5 2. Difficult to stop a runaway truck job. Yeah, and he's had a couple of finishes where it's the third dart that's hit the double, and it is just such a boost. Psychologically, 100. You feel like you've got away with something almost. And the right to call yourself Premier League champion. Phil Taylor, six times the creme de la creme. Last the, in 2012, Van Gerwen won it the following year, beating Taylor in the final. Van Gerwen, the favourite. For some tune, do you agree with that, John? Oh, yes, he's just so confident. Getting the job done when he needs to is exemplified so well in the, the semi-final match with Adrian Lewis. Well, both men, relatively easy wins in the semi-final. Van Gerwen threatened mid-match by Lewis, pulled away. Phil Taylor surviving a late rally by Gary Anderson, but was never behind to the world champion. For prevailing 10-7. And for the score for Van Gerwen. 92. Do we require 121? Still, the mood all night has been a bit tense, a bit nervy. Nobody has been near their perfect game. 97. And it looks like that mood still prevails. Taylor with a possible 13 dart leg eyeing up Three double 12 people. to lead the Premier League final. Emphatic. And uh, Phil Taylor mentioned before that he was a little bit edgy, a little bit nervous. That will calm him, John. That will help. Well, sometimes you need to be a little edgy and a little nervous. It's just not too nervous. It, it helps the adrenaline flow. It's a bit of a tightrope walk. But it can be good. Well, a victory over Michael Van Gerwen has become a personal holy grail for the power in recent months. Remember the Grand Slam final when he led early on in the piece. 100. Couldn't convert. In the Masters semi final, he missed a raft of match doubles and was punished by Van Gerwen. The Premier League, a six all draw. Taylor did well to earn a point. Had to come from 5 1 adrift and then in oh, Rotterdam. A week ago, Van Gerwen won to secure top spot. Do you think it's preying on his mind, the fact that he's still looking, well, has been looking for some time for a big win over the world number one, John? Yeah, it's his big thing now. He never had this opportunity his whole career because he was that number one. 
So this is uh, something a little more new and fresh. Uh, maybe Six way three. back when he first started, yeah, there was a few targets he had, but not like this. He's enjoying the challenge, I'm sure. You know, he's not enjoying the results. He's enjoying that one, two, one out. Well Rovers. into the 200s. So we're at one each. Good hold to throw straight back from Van Gerwen. Gerwen's highest finish of the evening. Has had a 170 out shot in the tournament. And regardless of the outcome of this match, it will be a Premier League that will be remembered for that world record average also 123.4 staggering average and, and everyone always adds to that and the average it could have been it could have been 136 and hit a double and then we see 111 110 111 we were talking about that before the night began as all these players are capable of it wouldn't it be great if a few do and maybe Phil 86. can bring his average up from that 102.86. I think he will if Michael keeps that standard up because Phil will have to. First to 11. 70. In this final. And that is the first maximum of this final. He had six in the semi, Michael Van Gerwen. Now, at the second time of asking only, Phil Taylor's throw is under scrutiny. What a response. That's an easy two-dark finish, but this is an easy three-dark finish for world number one. 93. An odd choice, Rod. He couldn't see the treble 20 clearly from where he was standing. <laughs> It did, it did make life awkward, didn't it? Well, you can move your feet. <laughs> Phil says maybe he should have. Good finish under pressure by Phil Taylor. Well, the outcome 100. always justifies the decision, or not, or not in this case. Going 54 for double 19. And he hit it, you know. But all been saying, marvellous adjustment, what a, what a wise shot. He didn't hit it, and so we wonder. One hundred and forty. It's amazing how you can average 114 and a half without really looking like you're coming out of third gear. Well, and you're second on the scores that count. 2-1 down. OK, it's on throw, I realise that, but... Still, with that sort of average, normally you break a guy out of two tries. 130. Well, in the semi-final against Gary Anderson, it was very much tit for tat, tit for tat from Taylor and Anderson as they repeatedly held until 5-4 to Taylor when he broke Anderson to go 6-4. Well, Phil really has mounted no challenge against Van Gerwen's throw. 100. In the two attempts. He stops to level it. Dead center. No worries at all. And Michael will be very pleased if uh, Phil doesn't attack his throw ever. Theoretically, I stress theoretically, Phil Taylor does not need to break throw. 140. If all 21 legs went with throw, he would win, but the likelihood of that, I would say, would be pretty slim. Well, yeah. Especially Van Gerwen. Second 180 there. He's looking to get better and better as the match goes on.